Okay, so hello, thank you for coming to my presentation, which is about how to use Google Gemini API to make localization easier with ARB Translate. My name is Robert, as you probably already know. I'm a Flutter developer at LeanCode and the author of the, uh, of the ARB Translate tool, which I'm going to talk about. We can start with defining what the localization actually is, because so we are on the same page. So localization is basically adapting our app to a different different market, different culture, different different language. So translation is the probably the most important part of localization, but localization also includes adjusting date and time formats units of measurement, colors, because colors in different cultures can have different different meaning. Also symbols often have different meaning and imagery of any kind can be offensive in different different culture or something. But for today, we are man mainly talking about the language since we are doing the translation using, uh, using AI. So let's go over the translation options that we have available if we are translating uh, our app. So obviously there is the human translation, which was available basically always. And its biggest advantage definitely is the accuracy, or at least the accuracy that it can provide. So in many cases, we will definitely want to still use human translation, but in some cases, other forms can be can be good enough. Second, there is the old machine translation, so services such as Google Translate, the DeepL, etc., which don't have the drawbacks of human translation because they are fast. Unlike unlike depending on humans, we need to wait for for someone to translate our our messages. Uh, also, we don't need to manage those people, which is cumbersome for human translation, especially if we have multiple translators for multiple languages. It's also cheap, unlike, unlike human translation. We don't need to pay anyone. Those services are cheap or, or even free in many cases. But the obvious, uh, obvious disadvantage of uh, machine translation, as you probably know, is the accuracy. In general, machine translation doesn't understand context and cannot handle plurals. I will get back to plurals uh, a bit later. And then uh, we have the large, large language model based translation, which basically became a thing fairly recently. So we have services such as Gemini from Google and ChatGPT, which perform quite well uh, in in translation tasks, so the LM translation is fast and and fast, cheap, and decent quality. Uh, when I mean cheap, I mean like Gemini API, the standard one at least, is is free. The ChatGPT API is very cheap, so under a dollar we probably can translate our app to dozen of languages. Uh, also, it's a uh, pretty good quality and it does understand some context. The con when I mean context understanding, I mean that it will use the language that's appropriate to our app domain. It doesn't work 100% of cases, but it definitely takes it sometimes into account. Also, it does understand plurals. So, as you may know, if we have a, if we have a message that contains some kind of placeholder, some kind of number, we may need to use different form of the word after it, so it's grammatically correct. So in English, it's pretty simple. If we have we have just two forms, for example, with month we have one month, and every other uh, number will be months. But in other languages, for example, Polish here, we have actually four different forms depending on the uh, on the number. Uh, yeah, so let's go over how this uh, how we can even translate plurals for different languages. And here 
we are actually using the ICU standard, which is maintained by, by Unicode, which classifies those forms in every language to just six categories. So we have the zero category, one category, two, few, many, and other. And there will be different mappings for those categories in different languages. But if we provide those six types, up to six types per language, the uh, localization tools such as flutter localization will generate the proper uh, will generate code for us which will properly format those those messages here are the examples of the of the table that is available on the unicode website uh, up top we have uh, the example for, for english and again for polish uh, below as usual with polish it's much more complex and doesn't make much sense. <laughs> okay, uh, this isn't this video isn't critical for our presentation, so I will just uh, go along. Uh, basically, the problem with LM translation is that we are missing the automation to. Uh, to use it. So we have this, we have fast, we have cheap translation. We may want to translate our app to 10 languages instead of, instead of two or something. But uh, then adding any new terms takes a lot of time. Uh, actually, there are parts of, parts of this video have been cut out to like make it a bit shorter. So it's even more time consuming in, in reality. And I'm just translating here the languages, German and Spanish. So that's the problem that the Airbnb translate, translate uh, intends to, to solve. It provides us with this automation to just get our terms translated uh, using, the, using the LLM, Gemini in particular. So our translate is a command line tool which automatically finds the missing translation in our ARB files and translates them using the Gemini. It's available on pub, uh, there will be a link later. Uh, yeah, We have also used the newly, newly published, at the time, Google Generative AI package. So actually, uh, our trans translate has been mentioned in the uh, release post for both uh, Flutter and the uh, Gemini release uh, release note. Okay, next we have I have a quick demo for you. Uh, hope everything is visible. Uh, this is my site project, which I will be using as an example. And here we have the translation translation files for nine languages, I believe. Yeah, and if we just want to add some new. Uh, some new term. You can just add it to our template language, which is English in this case. Call the ARB translate command. Hopefully it will work because we have a lot of technical <laughs> difficulty today, but it seems to be going well. So it's basically translating uh, our our language our new message language by language. To, to all of our languages. And we can check that it hopefully translated the our message correctly to Polish. So yeah, it was a plural message with uh, with months and actually everything is correct. Yeah. And also if you want to add a new language, so for example we can add Greek. We can just add a new empty ARP file, call the ARP translate, and it will uh, translate those all of our messages to, to Greek. It will probably take a couple of seconds, a couple of tenths of a second. Uh, sorry, what do you mean? Backend translation, because all of the facilities are returning from backend. 
sure. Uh, okay. Uh, I can answer this question now. Uh, so about the backend resources, uh, we are just handling the front-end ones. There, I'm sure there could be a different, like, similar tool for other uh, other use cases, depending on the source of the translation. Okay, so we have our uh, all of our messages translated to Greek now. Moving forward. Uh, so how does it work under the hood? Basically, there are five steps. To, to ARP translate. First, we need to find our ARB files and, and read them. We need to split messages into batches. We need to translate those packages of messages uh, using Gemini, validate the, resu the results, and write them back to our, our ARB files. There are a couple of challenges that we need to solve while implementing those fairly basic steps. First one is working with the IRB files, so I think reading, writing, etc. Is the communication with Gemini, actually writing the prompt that will give us good results, and the result validation. Uh, again, so we are all on the same page. Uh, let's start with the IRB file structure. Uh, IRB is based on based on JSON, but there is a bit more uh, bit more rules. So there are mainly around, around placeholders and pros. So placeholders are just variables that we can input into, into our messages. Plurals are the handling of the different forms depending on the, on the number. There can also be uh, some metadata associated with, with messages. So for example, here we have the description for the path because path is not uh, has different has two different very distinct meanings. It can be either an animal or a, or a sporting uh, sporting equipment. So yeah, uh, inside this this challenge we have actually three different ones. So loading the con the configuration because we want to reuse the uh, standard throttle localization configuration for for ARP Translate. Then there is reading the files and writing the files. And uh, there are some packages for working with ARB files, but actually we can reuse existing code for this purpose, because you may have noticed that the Flutter command for generating, generating translation actually needs to do exactly the same thing. Uh, for the most part, except for ri writing ARB files, but it also includes the scout, so we have it. Uh, the only problem here is that this code wasn't really intended to be reused by us, so it's not nicely packaged. It has some dependencies on internal Flutter tools, uh, tools mechanisms, but with a bit of hacking, we can provide some fake dependencies that we uh, we can provide some fake dependencies, some mocks, and and make it work. So actually, our translate is using a pieces of uh, Flutter tools code. Next up, we have communication with Gemini, and here we we are using the Google Generative AI package, and uh, here is the snippet of the README of this package, which shows how to do basic communication with Gemini, and it's very simple with a couple of lines of code. We can send the prompt, get the result. But actually, if you want to use something, uh, if you want to build a tool around Gemini or any other, any other AI model for that matter, it gets a bit more complex. Oh, sorry, skipped. Uh, so first problem is the token limit. So every AI model has a limited amount of data we can provide as input and limited amount of data it can return. In case of Gemini, the 1.0 version, it's 32,000 tokens on the input and 2,000 tokens on the output. Uh, token is around half a word, so it's 16K words on the input and 1K on the output. Uh, for translation, since our input and output will be roughly the same length, the lower of the two limits is much more much more constraining. And also we need some kind of buffer since we cannot uh, cannot predict what 
what our output will be exactly. So we need to split our messages into, into batches. I've mentioned it earlier, we're splitting them. Uh, in case of the demo, we, we had five batches of messages that are translated uh, one after another. The second problem is, are the unexpected results, since AI models are a black box and we don't really know what, will, uh, what it will generate. We need to be prepared that we get some kind of output that isn't, isn't acceptable by us. In this case, it's often some additional data other than, uh, other than our, just our messages, some uh, malformed also uh, data. I will get back to it with more detail. And the third problem, this one is Gemini specific, is that Gemini, the standard Gemini API, is not available everywhere. And most notably for us, it's not available in the EU for legal reasons. But the Gemini model itself can be accessed via Vertex AI, which is a Google Cloud Platform service providing AI, uh, AI tools more for enterprise use. So we are using the, uh, our translate can either use the standard v Gemini API or the Vertex AI one. And here again, we had to do a bit of hacking because the Google Generative AI isn't, the Google Generative AI package isn't intended to be used with Vertex AI. And we had to force it a bit to, to call the Vertex AI API, which is almost exactly the same, but there are also a few differences. So we need to be careful if you're going this, uh, this route. The package for Vertex AI, I know is coming. Uh, also, hopefully, at some point, the standard Gemini API will be uh, available in the EU, and we will have two options instead of two bad ones. <laughs> okay, next up, uh, the prompt. Here is uh, this the area where our translate probably could be improved. Uh, so if any of you are a prompt engineer, uh, feel free to open APR. Uh, so right now we have a fairly basic prompt, just translate Airbnb messages for, here we can provide a context of our application to Locale. Uh, and also we are specifying explicitly that we want uh, the model to add other plural forms. So it will add those different, uh, different variations of, of month, for example, in Polish. And then we are also passing messages with these, those metadata tags I uh, mentioned earlier in the ARB. So if there is description, description in this metadata, it will also be, it can also be used for better translation. Uh, yeah, okay, here is also a reminder <laughs> about uh, the description. And the last part, is validating the results. So as I mentioned, uh, we cannot exactly predict what kind of data we will receive. So we can get something that isn't even a, a JSON or is a bit of text and then JSON. We can get malformed uh, ARB uh, format. So sometimes the model will add extra pre closing parentheses or something to the, to the plurals. And then we can also get cases such as invalid ICU categories. So there is category 012. So sometimes Gemini extrapolates from that and creates three, four, five categories or something. So uh, basically, if any of those cases uh, occur, we're just retrying the, uh, the request. And usually on the second try, we get the correct result. But we are trying up to five times in some cases. Uh, also, here we are again reusing a bit of Flutter code to parse the results as, as IRB. Okay, uh, you can check out the, our tool on, on PAP. There's also a QR code for it to scan. And if you have any questions,
Okay, so who has questions? Raise your hands. Okay. Uh, hey, Robert. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, didn't you think about uh, skipping the ARB part uh, being passed to the Gemini model and essentially abstracting this away so that you would just send the content of the uh, term and ask it to translate this without all this effort to uh, validate the output? Uh, yeah, so we could theoretically send, uh, like we could drop the ARB format in communication with Gemini, but we want to keep it because it provides us with some kind of notation for plurals, for example, and placeholders, right? So we can just uh, tell the model that we want to translate ARB file, and it will already have some knowledge about the uh, about the structure of this file. And if we were just sending, like, if we were sending those messages some kind of custom format or custom model, we would then need to explain to the Gemini that what what is what basically. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, do you always translate like all ERP file, or do you translate only the part that is new? Why I ask? Because uh, sometimes mm, our clients, for example, want to translate the specific word or phrase in specific way, and sometimes we want to, you know, correct the translation in in, in some outputs language. So, what? Uh, can we use ARP Translate in that cases? Sure. Uh, ARP Translate never overwrites any translations. It just adds the missing one. So if it, it looks for the translation, it looks for messages that exist in the template file, in our, in my case, the English one, and that are missing from any other language. So it will, if you already have a, if you already have translation and you add a new term, it will just translate the single one. And also, if you have everything already translated, it will do nothing. I think we have time for some more questions. OK. Uh, you, you said about uh, some hacking activities uh, needed to be done to, to, to run this tool. Are, are the the, the, the things uh, implemented already in the in the package uh, or it's something it's needed to be configured uh, by by us by by, by user uh, yeah so it's all contained in the package from the outside uh, it's just a you just need to install it as a global tool provide your API key uh, and that's basically it in the most basic uh, basic case because it will load the l10 and yaml file and get all the other information from there so there is nothing uh, nothing hacking related visible to the end user of the r translate i've also seen a hand raised here somewhere hi thanks for thanks for presentation i've got a question about uh, is it also possible to do it with like chat GPT or other provider and if so do you have plans to like extend the translation provider to another uh, sure so basically we are absolutely prepared from the side of code to add additional providers I actually had a thought to uh, add it before this presentation and then you know release here the new version with ChatGPT, but at the moment uh, ChatGPT is not supported. It will be in the future. If you want to implement it, that would be great. <laughs> like it should be fairly simple. There is, you know, you just need to implement a delegate for a different model, and it should work. More questions, maybe. Uh, thank you for the presentation. 
I wanted to ask, like, with your knowledge and your experience building this plugin, how you would see, like, real translation? Are there some limitation for that? I think, like, a chat translation where people connect from different places and talk different languages and according to their uh, like location they will get answered in their language is it possible from your perspective now uh, could you rephrase the question because i didn't quite mm, uh, like a chart where people with different languages are able to speak and you will see as a user only the language you speak with okay so, so like the chat app, chat app which translates the messages on the fly like okay uh, i mean sounds doable i think if definitely some miscommunication can occur if the uh, if the translation isn't perfect but i think it would be functional although the latency would definitely be noticeable like this translation isn't instant so there would be you know at least a couple of seconds between you get the message that someone sent because it needs to go through the uh through gemini or chat gpt or some other model okay i think we got time for the last question i can see the hand in there okay Part of your job was to uh, communicate with Vertex AI. Yeah, I think uh, yes, it uh, yes. I think it is all. It could be also beneficial in other use cases. Uh, so, do you plan to maybe modularize it to? Uh, and from your perspective, it is better to wait for official uh, deployment of library or wait for European Union to change the law or is it uh, better to hack your package right now to get access to uh, Gemini? Uh, I mean, it probably depends on your use case. If you actually need to access Gemini, maybe ChatGPT could be also, could also work for you. Uh, I think there is actually I mean, at least looks decent from uh, based on the pub page. There is a third party uh, library for, for Vertex AI. So you could also try to use it. Here we are already using the Gemini one. So it was easier to hack it a bit and, and make it work with Vertex. But probably the third party library is uh, can also be a good option and unless you need all of the functionality of the Vertex AI service, probably the specific API you want to use is fairly simple. Like at the end, here we are just sending a string and getting a string back. Like there isn't anything uh, too complex under the hood. Thanks. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can uh, catch Robert in the break or after that in the networking time. Uh, thanks a lot again for Robert. Give him a round of applause. <laughs>